Alright folks, I'm a little late to the party on this one, but I'm finally getting around to it. I'm reviewing Creed. Yes, the film came out in November, but I'm just now getting around to see because I've got a lot of stuff going on. Alright, so Rocky, the original from 1976, is probably my all-time favorite movie. If I had to pick one to say, okay, that's it, that's what I'm keeping for future years to see, it's going to be Rocky. And, you know, the thing about the movies is the sequels, you know, they fluctuate in quality, but, you know, even if they're absolute main air, even as stupid as Rocky IV got, even as disappointing as Rocky V was, they're still this fundamentally enjoyable movies, and they create an entire ethos. You know, when you watch the Rocky films, they're so character -driven. You know, you can't help but root for Rocky. He feels like a, a really long-lost friend. He really developed a parasocial relationship with him. And he's such an iconic screen character. And when I heard about Creep when it first came out, or when the word first came out that it's being made, I kind of said to myself, well, you know, I'm not really so sure about this. I mean, go to Rocky movie where, you know, Rocky Balboa isn't actually the fighter. He's like just the trainer. You know, that doesn't really seem like it would be um, serving of the franchise and everything it stands for. But, you know, to be honest with you, I think Creed is actually a surprisingly good movie. Now, I don't think it's a great movie. I still think that uh, Rocky Balboa from 2006 is definitely the better Rocky movie. That's the movie that I would choose for the franchise to go out on. But just for what it's worth, you know, it's not bad. I actually kind of enjoyed it. I thought I would really hate it. But it's actually a pretty entertaining little popcorn movie. Alright, Creed. Where to begin on this one? Directed by Ryan Coogler. He's the guy who did uh, Fruitville Station. And like Fruitville Station, uh, Creed stars Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan, of course, uh, the guy from uh, the Fantastic Four remake that we will never talk about ever again. So he plays uh, one of Apollo Creed's illegitimate children. So we kind of have sort of an Evander Holyfield thing going on here. Uh, so anyway, you know, he starts off he's a kid, he's in a juvenile hall, and it, I actually looked at the Wikipedia article, and uh, Ryan Coogler actually still works in a uh, juvenile hall in San Francisco. So you know he's going to throw that in there. And uh, he's a kid, he's getting into fights, and one day he's adopted by, uh, by Apollo Creed's uh, widow, which is raises him, and it's kind of an inversion of Rocky. Because Rocky was about this dude who didn't have parents, who was, you know, just working by himself, barely scraping by, kind of a man of his own creation, blue collar. Whereas uh, uh, Creed, you know, Michael B. Jordan's character, is really privileged. I mean, he's got a white collar job, he's making a ton of money, he went to college, he lives a lavish life, lives in a mansion, drives fancy cars. I mean, he's already quote unquote man. But deep in his heart, in his corpuscles, he's a fighter. He wants to go out there and beat the crap out of people, so he does. So on the weekends, he goes to like Tijuana and beats up Mexicans for like four pesos a night. And eventually he says, you know what, I'm pretty good at this. I think I'll go to my uh, dad's old uh, training gym in L.A. So he goes there, and gets to a fight with a bunch of fighters, gets knocked out. So he says, you know what, I still want to do this full time. You know what I want to do? I'm going to go find out my dad's old sparring buddy, Rocky Balboa. So he goes to Philadelphia and he tells Rocky that he's Apollo's son. And he's kind of hesitant at first, but eventually gives him Polly's room. And Polly's dead. You know, it's kind of sad they didn't bring him back. Now, did the actor who played Polly die? Like, I seriously don't know. I haven't been keeping tabs on Wikipedia on that. But anyway, he's dead. Uh, the robot's not in there either from Rocky IV. I'm kind of disappointed. But the turtle's still alive. If you're a Rocky enthusiast like me, you need to know the turtle is still alive and active in this movie. So anyway, he starts training uh, Apollo's son, and his name is uh, Adonis Johnson, I think. That's like his formal name, but he adopts uh, Adonis Creed. Adonis Johnson Creed, I think, for the big fight because the other promoter wants to make money from it. So he goes up there, and he has a professional fight, and the cinematography is awesome. Like, these are some of the best fight scenes you'll see in a long, long time. Like, I, the first professional fight that they had shown in the movie, I'm almost certain it's done in one take. I mean, it's really incredible. And whereas, you know, the earlier Rocky movies, they were all very much, like, from a distance, you know, cut, cut, cut. I mean, these movies are just really super up close. I mean, it feels visceral as hell. I mean, it's just really... It's the kind of boxing that you don't actually see in boxing movies. Just up close, tight, spinning around. It's hectic. You're right in the thick of battle. Definitely the best thing about the entire movie. Uh, so anyway, uh, Michael B. Jordan, you know, he starts winning fights, and eventually he's called up to fight this one dude who's like a child from Liverpool, and uh, he goes out and has a fight, and it's your 
classic Rocky denouement, super duper fight. Uh, blood is everywhere. You get knocked out. You have a really dramatic finish in the 12th round. I mean, this just really, really good stuff all the way around. And it, it's a really entertaining movie. I mean, it's a Rocky movie because at the end of it, you want to fight everybody. Like, you walk out of the theater, you want to, like, just find a guy and say, you fight me. That's a sign of a good Rocky movie, so it passes that test. So, overall, I mean, it's a really entertaining movie. It's not a great cinema. It's not a timeless classic film like uh, the original Rocky. But for what it does, you know, it's not just a heartless, nostalgic cash grab. You know, it's not a really, like, identity politics heavy movie, which is what I thought it was going to be like, but it's not. They don't really try to import any, like, social commentary in it. And, I mean, there are some parts that are kind of corny. Like, they do a, a redo of the montage from the first Rocky movie where, you know, Rocky's training in the streets. Well, now, like, Michael B. George's doing it, but there's, like, guys on, like, dirt bikes behind him. And there's this last loans up, like, in his, uh, his bedroom, looking outside the second-story window, like, pumping his fist. I mean, it's a really goofy looking. But, I mean, like I said, overall, it's a really entertaining movie. I mean, Michael B. George, I don't really buy him as a fighter, though. I mean, you look at the guy, like, even when he's, like, swollen, and he's all cut and he's working out, you're like, this dude cannot take a punch at all. I mean, you know Sly Stallone can take a punch. You know Carl Weathers can take a punch in real life. You know all these dudes are legitimately tough. Michael B. Jordan, though, I mean, it does not seem like there's even a point like his character. Uh, he's on a date with uh, a girl, and his love interest is like slowly going deaf, so we'll see how that plays out in the one sequels. Which is like, you know, you're not really street. And he's not. I mean, he doesn't really have that, that tough guy persona. You don't really see him as like a legitimate boxer. Which I think is probably the biggest weak link of the movie. Um, but I mean, his dorkiness doesn't make up for it. What he doesn't convey is toughness and actually you know, looking and feeling like a boxer. He makes up for it with sort of his geekiness. Like, there's a really great scene, probably one of the funniest movies like uh, in any Rocky movie, where it's right before he has his first professional fight and he starts freaking out. It's hilarious. You're going to love it. And overall, I mean, it does get a little sad. Me. I mean, you do have a subplot about Rocky getting cancer. Spoiler, I'm going to say if he lives or dies, but he does come down with, like, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And uh, the very, very, very last scene of the film, I'm going to tell you whether or not Creed wins or loses. But he does sort of a throwback to the most iconic scene from Rocky 1. You know what I'm talking about. I'm going to show you exactly what happens, but it's clearly uh, sort of a, it's really supposed to be like a heartfelt, you know, retrospective. I don't think it really works. I mean, it is a, an emotional, sentimental film. It doesn't really have anywhere near the amount of emotion and intensity that Balboa had. Like, there's a movie that like, almost made me cry a couple of times. This one is just all about the action. And granted, I mean, it is sort of a rehash. I mean, it's the exact same story as Rocky, only, you know, with a different character from a different background, uh, a different sort of socioeconomic angle. But you know what? Like I've been saying the entire review, it's entertaining. It's a good popcorn movie. I mean, if you go see it, you're going to enjoy it. And uh, don't know what you say. You know, you can probably go catch it now at the matinee. It's like four bucks. Get you some popcorn. Get you some uh, Ultra Pib. Just enjoy it. It's not the best Rocky movie, but it's not a terrible Rocky movie. And it'll make you feel like beating somebody up at the end. What more can you ask for? I give it three stars. Three out of four, go check it out. Not a bad movie.